there is a concept of organizations that learn and how organizations learn. It's, it's Chris Argus's label. Single loop organizations fix problems. When a problem occurs, well, we shipped the code and it didn't have this template in it, so we brought it back and we put the template back in and we reshipped it. Single loop organizations fix problems. Double loop organizations fix problems and fix the situations that caused the problems. Double loop organizations say, how did we ship the code without the critical template? And what should we do to make that not happen again? So the possibility of a double loop organization means changing the conditions in which the problems arise. Now the runtime environment for social software is the computer. But the runtime environment for the community are the users. And the users aren't typically under the management of the site or service, right? Which is to say that the traditional tools of, well, we're going to change your contract so that you're required to go through this step before you do X isn't possible for a lot of institutions that rely on coordinated voluntary participation. Right? So how do you get out of that? How do, you, how do you get a double loop organization where many, and in some cases most, of the participants aren't actually amenable to management? Let me get the slide please. So there is a very interesting game uh, written by a philosopher, Peter Suber, that I think illustrates this possibility. And the game is called Nomic, uh, N-O-M-I-C. And uh, it was written in the early 80s to illustrate the political form of self-modifying systems. The, rule, the rules of Nomic are very complicated. I won't put them up here. But I will put up a very simplified version of the engine by which Nomic works. There are roughly a, two classes of rules, A and B. I put up here a simplified rule set with four rules. And you can see at first glance that it looks like the moves in the game are all about adding, altering, or removing B-level rules, but the A-level rules are inviolate. However, the rule that says A-level rules are inviolate is itself a B-level rule, <laughs> which is to say one of the moves in the game can be to make A-level rules modifiable under certain conditions. So it is certainly harder to modify A-level rules, what are in the real game of Nomic called 100-level rules. It is certainly harder to modify those rules, but it is not impossible. And this idea of constitutions, of agreements with a group of people that include the possibility of modifying the agreement by the group as they go is one of the hallmark of very long-lived systems. This is the most speculative of these three grand challenges. This is the most speculative of the three. But we're starting to see even this show up. Uh, Joel Spolsky and Jeff Atwood have launched, uh, after launching um, uh, Stack Overflow, their successful Windows programmer uh, question and answer site, they've made the pattern more general with a meta site called Stack Exchange, area51.stackexchange. And they say, Propose any site for Stack Exchange you like, but we're not just going to let you launch it as if it was a WordPress instantiation because we care that these sites work well. So there's a whole process by which they have to know that there's a certain number of people committed to the site, that there's a class of questions that can be better answered here than elsewhere. And if this sounds a lot like Red Lemonade, it's because these patterns are showing up over and over in areas that are much more general than any one field of endeavor. And you can see here on the side, I don't know how well you can, how well you can read it, but you can, on the side there are hundreds of proposed Stack Overflow sites, right? most of which don't launch because in this process, right, reasons are discovered that either it's too similar to another site or there's not enough of a community or the questions aren't good enough. So already there's a very high level of community involvement in vetting the system, single loop organization. But what's really interesting about Area 51 is it is also implementing some of the characteristics of double loop organizations. 
because it has a concept of karma, of good behavior. And if you build up enough karma, as you go deeper in the list, you get more and more authority, right? Really active, really passionate users always feel a sense of ownership of a site, a service, a resource. What Joel and Jeff have said is, we think we can take that feeling and make it actual. And if you get down to the bottom of the list, right, if you're around long enough and your behavior is good enough that you get 10,000 points of karma here, you can actually start manipulating the site in the same way the owners can. Right? This, is, this is an early model of actually involving the users in double loop chain. Here's another one, much more radical. I don't know if it'll work or not, but it's just interesting that someone even thinks they can try. Over here you see uh, MySpace unique visitors. This is the history of MySpace uh, post Facebook in one chart. Uh, but the important thing here isn't the chart. The important thing is the sentence at the top. We don't work for MySpace and we don't own MySpace, but our idea is simple. We believe that people who use the internet should own their internet. MySpace.com is the ideal opportunity to do that in social networks and more. So this is a proposal called MySpaceCondos.com. And the idea of MySpace Condos is that you would claim a MySpace profile and use the social networking characteristics that MySpace offers, access to a social graph, a place to put your content, and so on. But that you would also become part owner of the site. Right? Because right now it looks like MySpace is simply going to be sold for scrap. And what these people have said is we can actually change the ownership model so that the people who are involved in the creation of the social graph of the content on the site also become the people who own and control it. I don't know how that will turn out, obviously. It's early days. But it is an example, again, of this kind of thinking, how far can we go to put the users in charge of a system that they care about enough to keep operating in a functioning way.